This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are in front of the house and here we see Tesla Model Y Performance from Marcus Biel. And this video I'm going to show you, we have a little smart house at home now from Tiber. Tiber is a very popular app that Norwegians use, well, actually or maybe also other countries. But you see this app here? Yes, you can see lots of stuff here. I'm going to show you what I use Tiber for. So. Here we have a pretty long cable, type 2, with, uh, yeah, like this one, you know, it has the, it's from Metron. So uh, it has the, the, the remote for Tesla to open it and to stop charging. And I went for the, I don't remember, is this 10 or 15 meters? Well, it's quite a long cable. And we have a, an easy box over here. And then this one is connected with the, with the rest of the house. I have to show you the rest of the house, what it looks like. Here we have this homey device, which is just a gateway for connecting many different devices to this one. And in the basement here, we have the Uso water heater. This one pulls two kilowatts and it's connected to, they call it Tibe power up, which is basically just the hardware. This one is the, the power switch that is then connected with the whole Tibe system. So the power switch can then control, well, the uh, home device uh, to switch it on and off, depending on uh, uh, energy price. So, wow, lots of storm by clothes here. So you see here, right now it's uh, relatively high price, but nowadays it's, super cheap electricity but then if we look at homey you will see that in here we have configured homey that if the electricity electricity price is too high then the water heater will temporarily shut off to i guess save energy but i guess in the future we will also care more about the shaving off peak power because we have to pay for peak power so that's uh, not again i mean it's just right some people might say it's just a gimmick this one, how much are you actually saving? Uh, well, I'm not sure about that, but I will show you the, the, the best feature that I use it for uh, the, the Tiber. So the bathroom also had this smart controller here. It would like to have it nice and warm in the bathroom. This one is also controlled via Tiber. We see it here. And uh, yeah, the bathroom is now heating at 542 watts. And the whole system pulls nine Point, uh, no, no, sorry, 6.9 kilowatt. And how do we know? Well, because we have Tiber pools here that reads from the meter and then displays quite accurately how much power we are pulling right now. So this is the fuse box and there is one, where is this again? Yeah, one of these, um, these uh, circuits goes to the charger outside or the charging station rather. So what I can then do with this system is, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It's not called load balancing, but you see here, uh, my fuse, yeah, I can show you by the way. The problem in my house is that the fuse is not that strong. It's only 32 amp. I think this is the main fuse. And before I had this system, when I charged the car too strong, too fast, it would then blow the main fuse and the whole house goes black. Well, at least this side, not the other side, my neighbor. So you see right now we are charging at 23 amp only. Hmm. Ah, yes, I was going to demonstrate something. Let's go downstairs and show you something. So here we have the, the stove, the cooking place, right? And you'll see that um, right now, actually, if you look at the, this is the EC box app. You see, we're supposed to get 28 amp maximum, but it's been limited to 23 amp by Tiber because we actually had some load in the house. But I will show you that if you didn't go over to Tiber and we then look at the faces, you see that uh, the one, this is, yeah, this is quite high on the, the red here because the car pulls one phase only. We're charging a single phase. There's no triple. And this is kind of weird. We have two phase. This is the, the Norwegian, the weird Norwegian, um, they call it uh, three, some quasi three phase, something we, I don't know if you call it two phase, but um, I'll show that once once you start uh, some, some load, let me, let me just keep, uh, maybe just uh, keep this one on. I'm going to put some load on the system now. Then we should see a spike in the, on the red line. Hmm. 
There, boom! Wow, 44 amp temporarily. <gasps> Turn it off. <laughs> okay, but what this hopefully does is to then limit the charging. If you go, no, not this one, that's sensible. If you go to this one again, you see, you see, <laughs> it went down to 7 amp. And you can also get the confirmation here. The system detects quite quickly that, whoa, you, we are pulling a lot of load on that, that face. We have to lower the, the <laughs> current to 7 amp only. And it, it's going to stay like this for actually a while. I think it's more like 5-10 minutes until it uh, starts, trot, I mean, starts uh, ramping up again. So this will prevent the main fuse on our side to, to be blown. But the problem is, what I have experienced is that, yeah, you see now it's way lower is that if you have on the on the right side here, you have load that is not on this circuit, then the main fuse still goes, <laughs> if the power here goes beyond 10, 11 kilowatt, then the main fuse still goes. So that's the downside of the system that it, it can only do the load balancing or the, the what do you call it, call it, on the same phase as the car is charging on. Yeah, you see inside the car, it still reports only seven amps so we have to wait a while until it goes up, but it will automatically go up. But you see that we can simply not go higher here because this is then not limited by the car. It's the charging robot or uh, yeah, it's the easy box that limits it. So it's out, out of our reach. And also it means that this will work with any car, not just Tesla, because it's out of test. Or if it's out of the car's control, it's just the charging station that uh, controls how much power you get for charging. So this kind of dynamically uh, limiting the power is very useful because in the past, especially during winter when I have higher load, I kind of need to set it to maximum, let's say 20 amp. But uh, there are times when we don't use that much power in the house and I want to charge at at least 28 amp, but then uh, it's then I might risk blowing the fuse. So at least, you know, this solution here that I have in the home works kind of. <laughs> it's not optimal, but it at least it's a small upgrade to charge the car faster when I need to. So eventually when I move to the new house in Yesheim, I will have 400 volt uh, TN um, three phase. So then it will be better. But over here now, it works for now. And also uh, it's just that, that, that app, you know, that TIB app, let me show you again. This one here, where you can see the graph and everything and you can see the energy price and everything. That's kind of cool for me to pay attention to and I can also control the heat in the basement or wherever, right? And I can see that when the electricity price is really low, then I want to charge the car, heat up the house, use as much energy as possible. <laughs> so yes, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. Yeah, you see now we are back to 28 amp. So after a while, after the sense that there's not too much load, then we can go higher and faster.